Things are starting to come together, folks. We, we're starting to get an idea of what the remaining Apple Silicon timeline is going to look like. We've, we've got all these pieces of the puzzle, and it's our job, you and me, as detectives, to solve that puzzle and figure out what's going to happen. Now, sure, yes, this is a puzzle that will eventually solve itself completely on its own, independent of us, but if you're trying to make an informed decision on when you should buy your next Mac, this is the video to watch because we're going to talk about everything that we know for the next basically two years. So the tech drought is kind of continuing. I mean, a little bit. For, for the Apple news, absolutely. It's now August. My first video of August. Yay. Let's get some, we'll get some confetti for that part. That's gonna, I hope I remember to do that. But now we're in August and we still have to wait another month plus before we get to Apple's coveted September iPhone event. And that's where hopefully we'll kick off a pretty exciting fall because recent news has reported on the appearance of two new Mac model numbers in the Eurasian database. Now, this is something that has been reported on for years now, Mac model numbers that appear in the databases ahead of launches, and they tend to be pretty credible. Now, the last time this happened, I believe, was the Apple Silicon Macs that came out last year, so that's a pretty good sign. So in this case, there are two new model numbers, and this we think is pretty guaranteed to correlate with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now we're still not 100% sure on the timing for both of these, but this definitely lends credence to recent reports that are talking about them coming out this year, which if you had said this Earlier in the year, we would have said, oh, of course, obviously, they're going to come out in, like, March. And then we would have said, oh, they're going to come out in WWDC. And then people were like, oh, they'll come out in July. But now we're looking at October or November. So it is still this year, but, but pretty late. Now, that's not necessarily an unexpected thing. Last year, the initial batch of Apple Silicon Macs came out in November. But there were also other extenuating circumstances, and there continue to be circumstances outside of the normal tech realm that are at play here. So, what are we looking at, October or November? Well, to be honest, my money's on November. So, what is taking so long? That's a question that I've gotten a lot. And honestly, I think the big answer for this is COVID. Apple is working remotely. And what is already a company that uses very siloed teams, you know, people are working on very specific parts of products. There's very few people that have a complete picture of the entire thing that's being worked on. And now on top of that already somewhat fragmented process, you've got people working from home. Could you imagine trying to develop a new processor working remotely? That is a tall order. And so that is absolutely causing delays in addition to chip shortage and supply chain constraints that we've all been talking about for quite a while now. But still, you might say, that's a really long time. And this is a redesign that has probably been underway for quite a while. But to give you an idea of how long it takes to actually make one of these products, especially when you're doing this transition, apparently the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro were under construction, were under testing and development all the way back at the end of 2019, more than a full year before they came out. And if you'll recall, they didn't change a single thing about the design. The external dimensions are identical. Even on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the logic board and layout and like the heat sink and the fan, identical. So if it took Apple over a year to work on those M1 Macs that have zero design changes, you bet that the work on the 14 and 16 inch Apple Silicon MacBook Pros started at the same time. These things have been in development for probably two years at this point. And that's because they're changing a lot. It's not just a new chip, it's also a new design and also mini LED displays which have been a whole other can of worms in terms of development delays. 
So that's why this is taking so long. Um, and because of that, I think November or like, you know, the last week of October is the most likely timeline for this. But beyond that, we also have new reporting from Mark Gurman that's suggesting that the Apple Silicon Mac Pro could come out in 2022. Now that would, would be probably at the very, very end of it. In the past, the past two versions of the Mac Pro, they've been revealed at WWDC and they've launched in December. That seems like a pretty likely scenario. Apple has done this a bunch of times. Obviously last year with the transition, they announced it in WWDC and they didn't actually give us the product or the chip until the very end of the year. But before that, in 2019, the Mac Pro, same thing. They did that in 2017 with the iMac Pro and in 2013 with the trash can Mac Pro. So I think it makes absolute sense for them to talk about this new Apple Silicon Mac Pro right smack in the middle of 2022. Now, this actually goes in hand in hand with another rumor that has been talking about a refreshed Intel Mac Pro. This is something that might confuse you. Why would Apple release an Intel Mac Pro now after Apple Silicon is already here? Well, the big boy Mac Pro plays by slightly different rules than something like a MacBook Air. Seems pretty obvious. I mean, there are still a lot of professional people that use cheese grater Mac Pros from 2010. So these are products with a much longer lifespan that don't get updated as much, that get upgraded by users a lot more than any other Apple product. And so as such, I don't see Apple just dumping the existing Intel Mac Pro, which only came out two years ago. Remember what I said earlier about Apple developing the M1 Max as far back as September of 2019? Well, if you'll recall, the Intel Mac Pro hadn't even launched yet. So they were launching an Intel Mac Pro while they were already working on the Apple Silicon transition. So does that really sound like what a company would do if they were about to get rid of that Intel Mac Pro? Absolutely not. You would not put in years, probably four plus years of development on an Intel Mac Pro if you're already going to abandon it, right? If you get three years into a project and then realize that it's gonna go somewhere else, you're not gonna just launch it and then move on to another really expensive project. You would adapt that. Or in the case of Apple, you're planning on having both of them side by side. I talked about that in my video about the Apple Silicon Mac Pro concept that I worked on with Ian Zelbo, who's a very talented render artist. You can check that video out in the pop-out card up there. And we basically said the same thing. The Apple Silicon Mac Pro probably isn't gonna be ready just yet to, to take on the likes of a fully specced out 50 plus thousand dollar Intel Mac Pro, which is why you just have both. But setting aside this new, very expensive Mac Pro, the thing that I'm really interested in from Mark Gurman's new reporting is basically saying that a high-end Mac Mini is going to come out soon after the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Personally, this is something that makes a lot of sense. The soon after wording is a little confusing, but what I'm hoping for is when we get this late October or November event, revealing the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, I would absolutely love if a higher end Mac mini comes out at that event. I think it would make a ton of sense. It would, it would basically be just like last year's event. We got three Apple Silicon Macs, a base Mac mini, a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro. This would basically be a higher end Mac mini and the two higher end MacBook Pros, all of course sharing the same processor, that M1X 10 core with the 16 or 32 core GPU. That is, I think, pretty likely. But this wording does make that seem a little bit confusing, you know? Soon after, would it be at its own event? Is it a press release thing? Is it an announced at the same event, but it doesn't actually ship until later thing? I don't know. My money's hopefully on the last one. I think it would make sense to reveal you know, 14, 16, and Mac Mini all at the same event. Really just, you know, throw it out there, say, holy crap, look at this stuff. So what are we looking at overall? Looks like 
MacBook Pro 14 and 16, and hopefully a Mac Mini late this year. A redesigned, less expensive MacBook. I'm not even gonna call it a MacBook Air. I know that's how most people have been referring to it, but go check out my video on that if you're curious to know why I'm not calling it a MacBook Air. And that would basically fully transition the MacBook lineup, right? You'd have the M1 MacBook Air pretty much unchanged. You'd have this M2 colorful MacBook. Then you'd have 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Awesome stack, by the way. We'd also get the two, you know, M1 Mac Mini, M1X Mac Mini, fantastic lineup there as well. And then next year, hopefully that would come in the spring. Then hopefully in spring or fall, we would get the larger screened iMac. If that has mini LED, that's gonna be a real killer. And then in the at the very end of the year, we'd get this smaller Apple Silicon Mac Pro. That is a pretty great lineup. And it would actually hit Apple's two year transition threshold, which is curious because so far, my confidence has been low. So Mark Gurman seems pretty confident in all of this. You know, those MacBook Pros coming out this year, a Mac Mini coming out soon after that, redesigned, colorful MacBook, larger iMac, and a Mac Pro, all happening within a year and a half of this video's upload. That sounds awesome, but if I may, just throw in a bit of caution there. Think about how far we've come so far. November 2020, was when the first Macs of this transition came out. Three of them. Since then, we've got one more, and it still has the same chip. So, you know, we've already burned through, I guess if you start the two-year transition at the end of 2020 instead of WWDC, then we haven't burned through a full year of that transition, but we're almost halfway, and we've got one chip, we've got four products, and only one new design, I would just urge a little bit of caution in setting expectations. If you're trying to get this new Apple Silicon Mac Pro, and you know, you're like, oh man, I gotta wait. Don't expect it to happen like that. It's not, it's not gonna happen. These things take time. Hopefully that amount of time is quantifiable, and it's, you know, November 2022, but I'm just saying at this point, given how things are going, it would be wise to proceed with a little bit of caution. So let me know in the comments below what you're most excited for in these next few months, or I guess over the next year or so, and I will see you guys in the next video.